California just debunked, completely debunked this myth that renewable energy does not work on a massive scale, on a, in a massive economy. This is still believed by even experts. Even experts in the electricity sector say, oh, it won't work because of blah, 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 blah. And California's gone ahead and said, oh, actually, you're completely full of shit because we just actually surpassed these numbers you said. It can't be surpassed. I don't know why this hasn't really been reported by mainstream news. It should have been. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a YouTube member, that'd be great. I'll put a link in the description below. And of course, the more people who support the channel, the more we can get this news out there that renewable energy is the solution. That electric cars in combination with renewables actually work on a massive scale. California just debunked a big myth about renewable energy. The state went a record 98 of 116 days providing up to 10 hours of electricity with renewables alone. So in a historic first, California, powered by two-thirds of clean energy, became the largest economy in the world to achieve this milestone. Now, there's places around the world that use similar amounts of renewables because they have the resources already, like massive rivers, where they can produce huge amounts of hydropower. But... California has done something that we've really never seen before on this scale. Governor Gavin Newsom announced California achieved an historic milestone. The state was powered by two-thirds clean energy in 2023, the latest year for which data is available. And that means California is the largest economy in the world to achieve this level of clean energy. The state released new data showing California's continued progress toward a clean energy future with 67% of the state's electricity sales completely coming from renewable energy. And since then, it's actually increased significantly. In 2024, California added a record-breaking 7,000 megawatts of clean capacity to the grid, representing the largest single-year increase in clean energy capacity added to the grid in state history. This new figure broke the previous record set in 2023 and 2022, marking a third consecutive year of unprecedented clean energy growth. But I think for me, what really stands out even more than that is for the first time ever, clean energy provided 100% of the state's power nearly every day this year for some part of the day. 100% pretty much every day this year. Not since the Industrial Revolution have we seen this kind of rapid transformation. Now, this 67% number is, is really good, but the truth is we believe the number is closer to 78 to 80% this year. Historic investments over the past 15 years have led to an extraordinary pace of development of new clean energy generation, particularly the cost declines of batteries and solar. As the grid is increasingly powered by clean energy, pollution is down. Air pollution in California is declining and the economy is actually up as well. Greenhouse gas emissions in California are down 20% since the year 2000. I mean, the state's grown. It's grown enormously in 25 years and yet greenhouse gas emissions have gone down 20%. Now, the state's GDP in that 25-year period, grew by 78%. The power sector is a major driver of the decline in greenhouse gases. Emissions from electric power have been cut in half since 2009. It's a 50% reduction from emissions coming from electricity. California is home to the most clean energy jobs in the United States, and the state's renewable energy and clean vehicle industries lead the nation in growth, which is kind of a surprise considering all the negative stuff we often hear about California. California boasts more than a half a million green jobs and has seven times more clean jobs than fossil fuel jobs. Solar and wind jobs account for a majority of green jobs 
and battery storage and grid modernization is the second fastest growing sector within California's clean energy workforce. California continues to move at a rapid pace as well, bringing on clean energy. Um, actually, in spite of a lot of the news in California, it's actually increasing significantly. Since 2019, a record 25,000 megawatts of new energy resources statewide have been added to the grid, with most of that being solar and battery storage. This aligns with the governor's roadmap to the state's clean energy future released in 2023, which called for 148,000 megawatts of new clean power by 2045. Solar represents the technology with the largest amount of installed renewable energy capacity in the state. Over 21,000 megawatts of solar capacity operates the electric grid and another 19,000 megawatts of behind the meter generation. California Grid regularly breaks solar generation peak record levels. The latest solar peak record recorded in late May was more than 21,500 megawatts of solar generation. Now, there are problems with curtailment of solar in California, but adding batteries to the grid is helping to solve that to some degree. The state is doubling down on its goals by swiftly increasing its battery energy storage capacity. The state's battery fleet now stands at over 15,000 megawatts, 1,944% higher than 2019. The state's storage fleet is regularly storing any available extra solar generated during the day, not all of it, but much of it, and supporting the grid by dispatching that electricity during the evening. And that means that nine out of 10 days, so 90%, in fact, just a bit more than 90% of days this year in California have been powered by 100% clean energy for at least some part of the day. In 2025, California's grid has run on 100% clean electricity for an average of seven hours per day. That's, that's huge. Seven hours per day, only 100%. But that doesn't mean in the other 17 hours of the day, California isn't running on some amount of clean energy. They are. It just means that for seven hours of the day, that's all they run on. And the rest of the day, it's some combination. Data compiled by the California Energy Commission shows clean energy has powered the equivalent of 52 days in the state, nearly 30% of the year to date running on 100% clean renewable energy. Now, this was data from, I believe, about two months ago. That already surpasses the amount of clean energy days last year and represents a 750% increase in clean energy days since 2022. 750%. Here's the thing. This sounds good, but it'll be better next year because this change isn't stopping anytime soon. Now, one of the biggest myths about renewable energy is that it isn't reliable. Sure, the sun sets every night and wind does calm down, putting solar panels and turbines to sleep somewhat. But when those renewables are humming, they're providing the grid with electricity and charging banks of batteries, which then supply power during the nighttime. A new study in the journal Renewable Energy that looked at California's deployment of renewable power highlights just how reliable the future of energy is actually going to be. The perception People believe, they massively believe this, it, renewables are, are too intermittent. They're not reliable. We can't have a reliable grid with renewables. But this study found that last year, from late winter to early summer, that renewables fulfilled 100% of the state's electricity demand for up to 10 hours on 98 of 116 days. 98 of 116, so more than 80% of days Renewables provided more than 10 hours of demand. That's a record. Not only was there no blackouts at all during that time, 120 days when the grid predominantly used renewables, right? 70, more than 70% of electricity in the grid was renewables and there was zero blackouts. But that was thanks in part to battery power. And at their peak, renewables provided up to 162% of the grid's needs. 
adding extra electricity, California could then export to neighboring states or use to recharge the batteries. This study really finds that we can keep the grid stable with more and more renewables, said Mark Z. Jacobson, a civil and environmental engineer at Stanford University and lead author of this paper. Every major renewable, geothermal, hydro, wind, solar, in particular, even offshore wind, is lower cost than fossil fuels on average globally. Yes, Californians pay the second highest rates for electricity in the country, but that's not because of renewables, but in part because utilities, their electrical equipment has set off wildfires. Like the campfire started by Pacific Gas and Electric's power lines, which devastated the, power, the town of Paradise and killed 85 people. And now they're passing the costs that come from lawsuits and burying transmission lines to their customers. That's expensive. To bury transmission lines is much more expensive than having them on poles and wires, as poles and wires. While investigators don't know for sure what sparked all of the wildfires that have ravaged Los Angeles recently, they'll be scrutinizing electrical equipment in the area, and this is going to cost money. Power lines are especially prone to failing in high winds, like the 100 mile per hour gusts that turned these Southern California fires into monsters. So many of you in California are saying, why the hell, if we have so much renewables, why is our electricity so damn expensive. That's your reason. Even with the incessant challenges of wildfires, California utilities are rapidly shifting to clean energy with about half of the state's power generated by renewables like hydropower, wind and solar until recently when that number has increased to about 70%. The study compared 116 days in 2024 to the same period in 2023 and discovered California's output from solar was 31% higher and wind 8% percent. After increasing more than 30-fold between 2020 and 2023, the state's battery capacity doubled between 2023 and 2024 and is now equivalent to the power provided by more than four nuclear power plants. That's something Australia can learn from. According to the study, all that new clean tech helped California's power plants burn 40% less fossil fuels for electricity last year. These batteries help grid operators be more flexible in meeting demand for electricity. Think about it, right? When is all that demand needed? Between about 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. in the evenings, people come home from work, the house is hot, they turn on their air conditioning, bang, the grid is like, holy hell, we can't handle this, it shuts down. But when you have all these batteries that can basically act as Pico plants providing instant electricity into the grid much faster than gas-powered Pico plants can that solves that problem. So the problem has been power peaking when people return home in the early evening and switch on appliances like air conditioners just when the grid is losing its solar power. Now we're seeing the batteries get charged up in the middle of the day and then meet the portion of that demand in the evening especially during those hot summer days, said Mark Rothleder, Chief Operating Officer of the California Independent System Operator, the nonprofit that runs the state's grid. Another pervasive myth about renewables is that they won't be able to support a lot more electric vehicles, induction stoves, and heat pumps that are plugging into the grid. But here too, California busts this myth. Between 2023 and 2024, demand on the state's grid during the study period actually dropped by about 1%. Why? Well, grist.org says that this is in part because some customers installed their own solar panels, using that free solar energy instead of drawing power from the grid. In 2016, Almost none of those customers had batteries to store that power to use at night. But battery adoption rose each of the following years, reaching 13% of buildings installing solar in 2023, then skyrocketing to 38% last year. For numbers sake, 
That is, of the 1,222 megawatts of solar capacity added last year, 464 megawatts actually included batteries. That reduces demand on the grid because those customers can now use their solar power at night. And I've said this many times before, grids, um, EVs are not the threat to grids that people believe they were. They are. And in fact, the government of France has said this as well. They're like, well, hang on a minute, you're ignoring these other factors. Batteries also help utilities get better returns on their investments in solar panels. A solar farm makes all its money selling electricity during the day when electricity is actually cheap. But if it has batteries attached to the farm, it can also provide energy in the evening when electricity prices rise due to the increase in demand. That evening battery contribution is very key to the economics working out, said Ian Kleisel, director of the Center for Energy Research at the University of California, San Diego, who was involved in this paper. So utilities are incentivized to invest in batteries, which also provide reliable backup power to avoid blackouts, meaning they're actually uh, more reliable than a non-renewable powered grid. But like any technology, it's true batteries can fail, or at least old ones anyway. Recently, a battery storage plant caught fire on California's central coast, the largest of its kind anywhere in the world. But it only knocked out 2% of the state's energy storage capacity. A grid fully running on renewables will have a lot of redundancy built in. Beyond multiple battery plants, electric school buses and other EVs, for instance, are beginning to send power back to the grid where a utility actually needs it, a potentially vast network of backup energy. So imagine when the majority of California's cars, vehicles, buses, trucks have batteries and can then send that power into the grid in the evenings when it's needed, not during the nighttime necessarily, just for that evening peak. But here's where the economics get interesting. The more renewables on the grid, the lower the electricity prices tend to be for customers, according to the study. Smashing another myth. This is unfortunately a pervasive myth in Australia. The renewable, renewables make the grid more expensive. It's not true. From October 1st, 2023 to September 30, 2024, South Dakota, Montana, and Iowa provided 110%, 87%, and 79% respectively of their electricity demand with renewables, particularly wind and hydropower. Accordingly, the three had the lowest electricity prices in the United States. California, on the other hand, got 47% of its power from renewables over that same period. Yet wildfires and other factors translated into higher electricity prices. The California Public Utilities Commission authorized its three largest utilities to collect 27 billion US dollars in wildfire prevention and insurance costs from rate payers between 2019 and 2023. Climate change is making California ever more prone to fires, a growing challenge for utilities. As you can see, California is shattering some of the most insane and pervasive myths about renewable energy in the world. And I personally am on board for everything that's happening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.